In this episode, we show you four super easy, family-friendly recipes that can be prepped ahead of time to be cooked on the coals of the fire. Be sure to use the chapter function to scroll to the recipe of your choice. Hi guys, welcome to the Northern Territory in Australia. Uh, it is about 34 degrees, it's about 5 o'clock in the evening. You will see I've got a good sweat moustache going on, it is really hot. It doesn't help that I've lit the fire behind me, although I've got it dying down now for coals. Because tonight over the coals we're going to be cooking foil packets. Foil packets are a really easy dish to make camping. We love them because um, they're almost fail safe if you're beginner to camping, super duper easy, really budget friendly. You can make uh, your ingredients go a really long way. If you've got children, it's a great way to get buy-in from them because you can have them help make up the foil packets to put onto the fire. So because they've created it and baked it, they're invested in eating it, which we've found is just fantastic. Um, and also really friendly on the waistline because you're quite often not putting a whole lot of extra ingredients. You're only making enough for your portion for what you eat. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now for editing purposes, I'm not actually going to make them all tonight because that would be crazy. There's five of us and that's a heck of a lot of meals. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so for equipment, you obviously don't need an awful lot. You need a fire or a barbecue, or even an oven, okay? Um, for all intents and purposes today, we are going to be cooking on the fire. I've had that built right up, had big flames. I'm now letting it die down because you wanna be cooking over the embers, not over naked flame. So what we need is some alfoil. Now, please buy the heavy duty strong stuff because you don't want it ripping when you're checking it and having all your ingredients tipping out into the fire. So we want heavy duty alfoil and we like to use baking paper um, just so that we're not cooking directly onto the alfoil. If you're happy to cook directly onto it that's absolutely fine, it's just what we prefer to do. Okay. Um, so the first ingredients that we're going to be cooking tonight is we're going to be doing a Mexican chicken. Super easy and what kids don't love Mexican chicken. Okay, so we have laid out three layers. I've done it with two and it's fine, um, but three's just safe, fail safe, and we're all about fail safe, right? So I've got three layers of alfoil. I've just ripped them out and put them on top with a piece of um, baking paper over top, okay? So all we're going to do is layer up the ingredients. Now I've just chopped up half a red onion. I've put in some um, black beans, the corn kernels, some fresh capsicum, and we're good to go. Okay, so nice and easy. But I mean, you can literally just open the tins and scoop out all the individual ingredients. It's just that I'm going to have the kids shortly make up their own foil packets. And it's just super easy if I've already put it all into the container so that they can just put a couple of spoonfuls on and hey presto, job's tidy. Okay, so we're just gonna put a couple of spoonfuls that along the bottom. Yum. Okay, and then we're gonna follow that with some rice. Now for the kids, we've got um, just long grain rice. Quite often I'll cook it up and I'll just sort of parboil it so it's just a little bit crunchy. But for the ease of videoing today, I've just bought the packet, um, packet stuff here. And this sort of thing is really handy. You know, like if you're going away with friends camping or you know you're gonna be into a few bevies, a few wines and then you're going to get to like tea o'clock, dinner o'clock and you just really don't want to be doing dinner. You could have already had all of these pre-made and just ready to throw on the fire and you can just concentrate on having a good time socially. So yeah, we're just going to tip in the rice. Now I forgot to say that um, Tony and I, we try not to eat the rice when we don't have to. Um, so we really like cooking with 
uh, this sort of thing, this particular brand is Slendia, it's just from the supermarket, but the konjac noodles, um, or the konjac flour, so yeah, they actually make a rice one, so we quite often cook with that so that we don't feel like we're missing out, but it's keto, low carb friendly, so that's an option for you. Okay, so we've got the rice, just going to crack a diced tomato, but obviously you can dice up fresh tomato, which is fantastic too. Okay, and we're just going to pour a bit of that across the top. Beautiful. Okay, now chicken. I've just diced up some chicken thigh. Okay, and we're all about packets, camping. We don't, we don't, we're no scratch bakers here. I'm a bit of a scratch baker at home, but when we're camping, we just need quick, easy pantry staples. So any sort of um, burrito or taco seasoning, anything like that would be fantastic. I've just put half of it into here, and then I'm gonna dust the top of it with a little bit extra. Okay, so we're just gonna put in some chicken, obviously chicken um, mince would be fine, turkey, actually you know we have beef mince a lot, whatever goes for your family it's all good. Okay so I've just got the chicken in there, okay and we'll sprinkle a little bit more of this across the top, normally I would salt and pepper but um, these seem to be quite heavy on the salt so I'm actually not going to. So we'll just put a little bit extra of that on top. And that is just about it. Shoe fly. Okay. Now, you can opt to skip this out if you like, but we always just like to put a couple little knobs of butter in there just to keep things really moist and juicy. And then I'm just finally going to sprinkle it with some herbs. Today I've got coriander because that's what was in the pantry. Um, but you can honestly put whatever you like in there. So I'm just going to sprinkle that on top. And uh, when it comes out, what we'll want to do is open it up, check that it's cooked. And then we can add a little bit of cheese onto the top. And the kids will want to put some sour cream on. Okay, our kids probably won't eat it exactly just like this, they'll want to put it into a wrap or into the taco boats, um, but for Tony and I this with a salad will be perfect. Okay, so the trick here at this point in time is that um, you want to make sure that it evenly cooks. So what we're going to do is join the baking paper together, okay, and we're just going to sort of Fold that down and fold it right in so that the tin foil doesn't catch it because we don't want any leaks. Okay, we're going to do the tin foil one layer at a time. Okay, and we're going to be turning it over so that um, one it's not one side heavier with more tin foil because then it won't cook through evenly. So we're just going to take it by its long side. And turn it over. And repeat. And turn it over again. And that's us, ready to go. Now I'm going to get the kids out and I'm going to get them to put together their ones and then we'll pop them onto the coals. So what we're going to do, the kids are going to put theirs on the fire and we're going to flip them every 10 minutes and it should take around 40 minutes but of course it depends on the heat of your coals. Yep, yours down over there. Can you put yours down next to Liam's Hunter? Good job, oh yeah. Who's excited? I'm excited. <laughs> 
All right, someone set the timer, let's do it. Yep. Okay, while they're cooking, I'm actually gonna start the next one, only because uh, Tony and I like to have um, lunch organized for ourselves the next day so that we stay a bit healthy. Um, kids, we're just making rolls or sandwiches or whatever's going, but a bit harder when you're out camping and you don't wanna be eating the breads. So you need to have something pre-cooked. So we're going to be making um, garlic prawn, okay? Um, garlic prawn with potato and broccolini. I've got broccolini this time just to start, shake it up, but quite often I've made it just with broccoli. So again, we need the same three layers of um, heavy duty aluminium foil. Okay. And then we need to top it. You don't have to, it's optional, but we like to top it with baking paper. So the first thing we're just going to do is put the base down. I'm just using red potato. Um, potato is a bit of a treat for us. We don't often have it, but we'll probably pair it with a bit of a salad tomorrow. So we just like to put a few little pieces of potato down. And the red potato just cooks up really nice. Okay, now um, the potato I like to try and keep, like I've cut it fairly small because obviously the larger you chop it, the larger it will take in the fire. Um, and I've got raw prawns. I really, really like garlic. So I've just chopped up about three garlic cloves and I've just tossed them through that. Um, I've actually just pulled them straight out of the freezer because um, I just feel like Prawns overcook really, really fast, and at least if they're still frozen, it gives potatoes a little bit of chance to soften up um, without overcooking the prawns too much. So, yeah, we're just going to lie them in there. So they're literally straight out of the freezer. You can see they've still got all the ice and everything on them, and I've just tossed them through that chopped garlic. Um, and that's our protein for the day. So I've been fairly generous because we'll pair it with a salad or something with the amount of prawns. Yum. It's gonna be a good lunch tomorrow. Okay, and then we've got the broccolini. Again, I don't wanna overcook it, so I've literally gotten it straight out of the freezer. And I've just got three or four heads there. You can chop it up, but I'm just going to leave it whole, sitting on top like that. Okay. Um, I'm going to sprinkle some herbs on. Thyme would be really good. I don't have specifically thyme. We've got a limited pantry. This one is uh, lamb herbs, which has thyme in it, along with rosemary, garlic, marjoram, and oregano. So that will be fine. Um, now, with everything, you can leave out I have a spoon, I'll just use my fork. Um, you can leave out the butter if you like, but butter just makes everything that much nicer when it's steaming and cooking in its own juices. Shoe fly. Um, sun's just going down actually, so the flies will be gone shortly and the mozzies will be out to swarm us. Now the trick and the secret with this one, it's not terribly healthy but you only need a drizzle is actually some cream and cream's always to come easy to come by when you're off grid because you can get the long life stuff so this stuff is great if you refrigerate it first you can actually whip it for a dessert and um, you can pour it into pastas and fettuccines and in this case the prawns so it's just gonna sort of make a um, garlicky, buttery, white sauce, if you like, that it's all just going to steam in its own juices and it's going to be delicious. Summer, would you mind giving me the salt and pepper, please? Sure. Along with just a little bit of salt and pepper. Thank you, sweetheart. Always like to have a bit seasoning and that's it too easy 
Now this one probably won't take the full 40 minutes, um, especially if you've chopped up the potatoes nice and thin, maybe 25 to 30 minutes. But again, keep checking it. If the potatoes are a bit firm, just stick them back in a bit longer and you might decide to stick that side down. And that's it, ready to go. Yum, yum. Right, it's been 10 minutes, so we're just going to roll over our foil packets. You can hear lots of good sizzling. Oh, it's hot. Uh, as I was saying earlier, if you have a of welding gloves or something similar that can be really handy for in a fire where you're literally having to get into the embers because the heat is intense but we haven't got one at the moment I think we've left it behind somewhere um, but yeah definitely a long handled pair of tongs is essential so we'll turn that again in another 10 minutes and we'll keep turning until they're cooked while we're getting these packets out of the fire, I'm going to fast forward you through to the next couple of nights where we walk you through two other recipes. So watch for those ones now. Hi again. As you can see in front of me, I've got another foil packet here. We have moved on to Cahills Crossing in Kakadu National Park in the Northern Territory of Australia. Tonight we're doing curried sausages, firm family favourite. It's the same process. I just thought I'd show you how this one would come out with um, no baking paper as opposed to the previous one we did that I've already made up with baking paper. It's a personal preference if you mind cooking on alfoil or not. So this one here, I've just popped in some brown onion, two sausages, a sprinkling of cubed up potato, carrots, mushrooms, and edamame beans. I normally put dehydrated peas, but I didn't have any. Okay, then we've used this SMB golden curry. You can just use curry powder if you have it. I'd probably put in, make sure you put in your salt and pepper and a wee bit of sweetener, like a teaspoon of sugar or some brown sugar or something like that. But this has everything in it. So I've literally just broken up pieces of it. I've chopped it off and just sprinkled it over top. Okay, we dollop a couple of little tablespoons of butter on it. And it is ready to go. Into the fire. Once those embers nice and red hot and we don't have any naked flame left so we'll wrap that up as per usual and there we have it they're great to um, prep the morning of if you're heading away on a big hike somewhere pop them into your fridge when you come home all you need to do light the fire sit down and have a bevy with your mates or with your husband or wife and uh, then when it's time you can just pop them straight on and all the hard work has been done okay meal four tonight is hawaiian chicken i've just seasoned the chicken Okay, I've put a little bit of flour and salt and pepper and some spices in there. All I had was some lamb herbs, which is thyme, rosemary, marjoram, that sort of thing. Okay, so very easy to prepare. All I've got today is I've got some red onion and I've got some diced capsicum. Now I've got a little bit of fresh capsicum in there, but I'd run out. So as I was explaining with one of the other dishes, I quite often carry these in our camping pantry because you can pull them out and they're super handy. So diced capsicum I've got in there. Obviously if we're having Hawaiian chicken, we need the pineapple. So we've got that happening in there. And then we're just going to sprinkle it over with a little bit of the soy, the sweet chili, and of course the filler, which we're going to use as rice. 
you can parboil the rice for intents and purposes we're just using these little foil packets Tony and I like to use the um, cognac rice so I will pop that into our ones instead of the traditional rice. But let's start with the rice because that loves to soak up everything. So again, we've got three layers of paper and I'm just going to assort everything onto the top, wrap it all up and it can go into the embers on the fire. I love that you don't need any plates other than a chopping board. Okay, you do need, yeah, I use my fingers a lot and you need um, obviously some tongs and welding gloves would be a really good idea. Okay, so we're just scooping some of that chicken on top. Delicious. Followed by some capsicum, some red onion, Kids don't like too much onion, so I won't go overboard. And I know they like the pineapple. So I'll put a hefty helping of pineapple on there. Delicious. Okay. Goopy fingers now. Okay, soy sauce. Don't overdo it because it will get really runny. You just want a little touch to go through there, followed by the sweet chili. Okay, and I like to just add a little wee dollop of honey. Honey is optional, but with kids, they like the idea of something being a little bit extra sweetened. Okay, that is it. Couple of dollops of butter in there, which I've forgotten, I'll go and grab, and then we're ready to go. It is like 33 degrees out here, super duper hot. And my other um, butter just in the time frame that I had it out for you guys had already completely melted <laughs> into liquid. So this one is fresh off the shelf. Okay, and then that's it. Now we just wrap it up as per normal. It's like a Hawaiian chicken pizza topping, but wrapped up in the foil packet. Are we having it for dinner? Yep. Yay! <laughs> you down to have a little look. A la Hawaiian chicken. Okay. Getting getting a bit dark out actually probably got hat here have I all right the saucy ones are ready I think so let's take a look can still hear them sizzling so I think they're going to be hot to open let's have a look how they've come out Honestly, I wish there was smell cam because it's so, so good. Look at that. We've got sausages, beautifully cooked mushrooms, carrots, potatoes, all that curries form this gorgeous, yummy. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Probably too hot for me to have a taste. Let me try. Mm. Okay, the shrimp ones are still cooking, but we're going to take a look at these. This one's Liam's one. He's sitting behind the camera looking very excited mm. about what it's going to come out like. The sun's just gone down. It's a much nicer temperature. 
Now remember these are piping hot so be very careful steam or juices could rush out or leak out so just be mindful of that and Liam's reminding me in the background to make sure that obviously you're flipping it as you're undoing it yeah. um, and not to just rip into it because if it's not cooked you'll need to pop it back in. It'll be difficult if you rip into it. <laughs> Now you can see my embers have been a little bit hot um, because I've got black paper but that's the beauty of the paper because it should still be perfect inside. Just unwrap that. Oh, yeah, get a spoon. Oh, it's always the worst. Just stir up. A little bit crispy at one end there looks amazing that makes it half the fun mm -hmm. so we'll put a little bit of cheese in while it's hot just to melt across the top and a little bit of sour cream Liam do you want to just bring the camera and do a little zoom up on yours Have a bite, Liam. Yeah. Mmm. That is so good if you cook it properly. Then it tastes really good. <laughs> <laughs> Moment of truth. So hot. Boy, it looks good. Need a fork. Oh, grab one. Oh. oh, yeah, the potatoes are cooked. Okay, can you zoom up nice right down in there, Summer? Right down so the viewers can see. Yep, just hold it there, darling. That looks amazing, doesn't it? So you can see the potatoes all cooked through. Broccolini's lovely. Prawns are just delicious. That is going to be to die for. Problem is, it smells so good. And this is my lunch tomorrow, so I'm not allowed to eat this one yet. Oh, it looks delicious. It looks delicious. The sour cream from Should we open up yours, Summer? <laughs> okay. Oh, well, it's dinner time in the Smith household. Looks like this one's a winner. Please, I would love you to go and try one of these out. If you do give it a go, let us know in the comments. And uh, obviously, if you like and subscribe, you can get to some other recipes. Let us know if you'd be interested in some dessert foils in the fire and whether that would be something you'd like to try because we've made a couple of those in the past and we'd be happy to do it if there's enough interest. Oh well, enjoy the cooking and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye.